Oh, hey guys. Hey. Give me just a second. All right, beekeepers, how you doing? Welcome to the third video in a four-part series about st getting started in beekeeping in the year 2020. For this video, we're going to talk about protective gear, bee suits, bee veils, gloves, or maybe even just a t-shirt. But we'll get to that in just a minute. Hi, I'm Scott McPherson, and this is Beekeeping from Scratch, where it's about the bees. There's lots of discussion about protective gear, and much of it is as polarized as whether to treat or be treatment-free beekeepers. But that's not what this episode or this channel is really about. But come on, let's face it, no matter how you slice it or dice it, as a beekeeper, you are sticking your face and hands into a box of bees, and not everybody is comfortable with bees crawling all over them. How much protection you need as a beekeeper is as much a personal decision as what brand of underwear you would like to wear. There is no real right or wrong answer so long as what you choose to do makes you happy, comfortable, and confident. As a beginning beekeeper, or even as a veteran, you need to feel safe around your bees. If that means you need a full spacesuit to approach your bees and open them up, well, then that's what you should do. A lot of armchair and small backyard beekeepers might rib you a bit for needing that protection, but don't listen to them. Do and wear what you feel is right. As you gain comfort and confidence around your bees, you can reduce the amount of armor you're wearing a little bit at a time. The bottom line is only you can decide how much protection you do or don't need. All right, before we really talk about protective gear, let's talk about being allergic to bee stings. If you have any questions at all about being allergic to bees, then you need to talk to your doctor. Even if you don't think you're allergic, I recommend consulting with your doctor to let him or her know about your exposure to bees and bee stings. There is a test that your doctor can give you to help you determine whether or not you are allergic and whether or not you'll have a bad reaction to being stung by bees. Things you may also want to talk to your doctor about are full bee suits, taking antihistamines before and after being stung by bees, and I would also talk to him about EpiPens. It is my belief that every beekeeper should have an EpiPen kit handy, regardless of whether you are allergic or not. You never know when you'll develop a bad reaction to bee stings, or if you get stung a whole lot, you may have a really bad reaction. Hey, it happens. There are beekeepers who have developed allergy and have had to quit beekeeping. They're also good to have if somebody else gets stung and is having a really bad emergent reaction. So listen, it could save someone's life, including yours. So I highly recommend that you talk to your doctor about prescribing you an EpiPen kit. So now, if you are allergic to bees and have consulted with your doctor and you are still determined to keep bees, then I think a full bee suit is probably indicated. And listen, if you find any of this information valuable so far, please hit like below. The first piece of gear we should probably talk about is the veil. Every form of protection includes the veil in some shape or form, and it is considered the essential piece of protective gear. And every beekeeper, whether they use it all the time or not, has a veil in their kit. The veil usually consists of a wide brim hat with netting or screening dropping down around your face and head. Alternatively, a veil may be made from stiffened netting that stands up from your shoulders. This can give you some more freedom of movement for your head, but it also makes it a little more difficult to scratch your ear or scratch your nose. And when you do, you need to reseat it on your shoulders so that you've got a nice tight fit and the bees can't get in. The main purpose of a veil is to keep bees off of your face and out of your hair. Being stung by a honeybee is really not so bad. It's not nearly as bad as a wasp. Getting stung by a bee is really just a momentary painful sensation that is replaced by warmth and then eventually itchiness. However, getting stung in the face is one of the more painful and inconvenient places to get stung, especially when that part of your face starts to get misshapen. For many beekeepers, a light veil is all they need, knowing that they'll get stung elsewhere, but knowing that that's really not so bad. In fact, some beekeepers even only wear shorts and a t-shirt with their veil. There are even some beekeepers who keep their bees without a veil, but listen, you really are increasing the risk of getting stung in the face or even in some more dangerous places like inside your ear canal or directly in your eye. So I really don't recommend it. At the very least, your protective gear should include some sort of veil that you could just toss on when you need it. The next piece of gear we should probably talk about are bee gloves. Bee gloves are generally speaking gardening style gloves that reach all the way down to your elbows. They protect your hands and your forearm from bee stings, but 
let's be honest, eventually you are going to feel a stinger make its way through the glove. For many beekeepers, the veil and the glove are the only pieces of equipment you'll ever need. However, as time goes on, the gloves are probably the first piece of protective gear that you eventually stop wearing. There is a huge tactical advantage to having your bare hands, and some beekeepers will swear that you get stung less not wearing gloves than you do when you're wearing gloves, because you have less chance of crushing a bee underneath your fingers, and you have a better sense of when you've got a good grip on the frames when you're carrying them and have less chance of dropping those frames. However, getting stung at the tip of the finger is another one of those really painful spots that'll make you groan when you do get stung. But that only happens if you start moving your hands around erratically or you crush a bee under your finger. All right now, a word about clothing. If you are just gonna wear a veil or a veiling gloves, then we need to take a moment to discuss clothing, specifically color choice and choice of materials. Bees will react more poorly to animal materials than they will to vegetable materials. For example, a wool sweater is likely to cause the bees to want to dig in until they can find some good flesh to sting. Color is the other important topic when talking about clothing and bees. I'd like you to think for just a moment. What colors in nature are there, and which of those colors are likely to attack bees and their hives? These are the colors that you want to stay away from. Also, keep in mind that a bee's sense of color is blue shifted from our own. This means that bees can see ultraviolet, but cannot see red. Because they cannot see red, colors that include red either show up as gray or brown, or even black to the bees. So they won't be able to distinguish red from black or pink from gray. The three main colors that the bees have probably never associated with attack are white, blue, and green. And those are probably the colors you should stick with. Another thing to consider is that bees are very tiny. So when you see a bee up close and challenging you, she probably can't see you as a target. When she gets up close, the shirt you're wearing just becomes a giant field of color and she can't really find a good place to sting you. However, in those places where the bees can see changes of color and shade, the contrasting areas between light and dark give bees a target and that's likely where you're gonna get stung the most. For example, okay, black is a bad color to wear anyway, but if you consider if you're wearing a black sweatshirt and you've got your flesh tone hand, right here at the wrist is where the bees can see the change and you're moving it around. That's a target right there around your wrist that you're gonna find that you get stung the most by the bees. It literally becomes a clear target for them to look for. It's not a field of color, it's a target. It's a place where they could say, aha, I see it and I can go after that spot and sting you. So the point there is to avoid clothing that creates high contrast between pieces of clothing or between clothing and your skin, because these will be the points that the bees focus on to sting you. As far as shirts, whether it's a t-shirt or a long sleeve shirt, you probably want to wear something like cotton linen that's either white or light to medium, blue or green, and something that's close to the tone of your own skin. It won't prevent you from getting stung, but it will affect how quickly the bees decide to start stinging and how much they sting once they begin. If you're one of those beekeepers who just wears regular clothing while keeping your bees, please leave a comment below and let us know what colors work best for you. All right, the next step in dedicated protective wear is the bee jacket. The bee jacket is made from lightweight material that makes it more difficult for the bees to sting you, at least in your upper body. In most cases, a bee jacket with its accompanying veil is all you need to work through all but the most defensive of hives. When the bees are stinging, they are looking for the most sensitive places to sting, and on most animals, that means the face. When the bees get stingy, they might try to sting you wherever they land, but in most cases they land on your upper half or try to crawl upwards towards your face. That's not because the bees are mean, it's just that evolution has taught them that stinging an attacker in the face is the best place to drive that attacker away. Most beekeepers who aren't completely comfortable going without protection have one or two bee jackets, and commercial beekeepers often have a bee jacket or two for those cases when they don't need to wear their full suit. All right, if you find this video helpful, please hit like below. And if you find my videos in general helpful, then please hit subscribe and ring that little bell icon so you can get notified each time we upload a new video. All right, now let's move on to the full bee suit, which I happen to like to call the space suit. The full bee suit provides full body coverage and the pieces usually zip together into one piece. You still need to provide gloves and you still need to find a way to protect your feet and ankles. 
and that's usually just with workman's boots and if necessary duct taping the bottom of the legs to your boots. This prevents the bees from stinging your ankles or as beekeepers affectionately say stapling the socks to your ankles. Every or nearly every commercial beekeeper has a full suit. When you have as many hives and yards as a commercial beekeeper, you will inevitably run into a particularly nasty hive. Additionally, commercial beekeepers usually have to work through their hives much faster than a backyard beekeeper. And when working hives at those speeds, you can often rile up bees that would otherwise be gentle. I recommend that every beekeeper have at least one lightweight full suit in the event that one of their colonies takes a nasty turn. This lets you get in and do what you need to calm the colony down, whether that's to requeen or to split the colony into many smaller colonies to demoralize the bees and bring them down to a more manageable level of aggression. It's also nice to have a spare bee suit when you want to show off your bees to someone who doesn't have their own gear. As stated earlier in this video, that the level of protection you need is a personal choice and I am not recommending what level of protection you need. I do recommend you have several choices in how much protection you need. You may choose to wear nothing but shorts, t-shirt, and a veil, but there will be days that you wish you had a spacesuit to keep the bees off you. Conversely, you may wish to wear the full suit most of the time, but a hot summer day will come, then you wish you had something lighter to wear, even if that's just coming down to a jacket. It's good to have that choice available and it's also good to be able to offer your bee suit to a visitor if they show some interest in seeing your bees. Whatever you do, stay safe and enjoy your bees. I'd like to thank Better Bee for providing the images and graphics used in this video. You can find a link to their website down below. I recommend that you take a look at their website and find some of the great deals that they have on beekeeping equipment and bee suits. Thank you. That's not what I was supposed to say. Why is that little box moving like that? What's with that glare? Okay, color is, okay, color, okay, okay, color is the, it's good to have that choice available. Why did I write that? Oh my goodness.